Patrick Henningsen talks on today's News Talk TNT. Ooh, and welcome back to the program. What a new world it is we live in uh, these days. War, pestilence, are these indeed the end times? A lot of uh, Christian fundamentalists seem to want to bring them about. They think Jesus Christ is going to appear out of a mushroom cloud over the Middle East. That's where we are these days. Uh, one of the tinderboxes that could lead to such a scenario, of course, uh, is in the Ukraine. And I'll be joined in 30 seconds by Johnny H., who's uh, taken some extraordinary footage, which we'll look at, of yet another atrocity perpetrated there yesterday. Uh, but first, I've got a quick public service message for you, uh, particularly relevant uh, to viewers and listeners in Australia. As winter settles in, the Don't Die July campaign uh, reminds us that safety never takes a holiday. Heart attacks happen more frequently in winter, claiming the life of one person every 12 minutes in Australia. Embrace the season with peace of mind. Explore don'tdiejuly.com and make heart safety a priority for you and the whole family. Sign up today. Visit don'tdiejuly.com to find out more about this initiative. Remember, CPR saves lives. And uh, without any further ado, uh, welcome to the program, Johnny H. Uh, now, uh, I gather you uh, were the immediate witness to the aftermath of some horrific scenes not very far from where you are now. Well, I'm in Donetsk now almost since a year, so for me it's not new. I've been a witness to... Unfortunately, I've been a witness to this many, many times. I personally released 70 video reports in the last year of similar things. Uh, yesterday was another day like this in Donetsk. There was a HIMAR attack. Uh, HIMAR are American rockets, and they usually come in sixes, so it's a six-pack, basically. So it uh, looks like three of them uh, were intercepted, and three of them got through. And, and what did they hit? What did they hit? What did what, what did they do? They killed. What did they uh, hit? What buildings did they hit? They hit a, a shopping center, a, a bank, a, a school. Uh, yeah, that was it. A shopping center, a bank, and a school. Uh, I went first to the shopping center. Uh, I was a witness. I saw the the bodies of uh, three women. Uh, they asked me not to put it uh, on air, so I didn't put it on air. Uh, for me, it's always devastating because I see these Russian women, uh, these were like more like middle-aged women, all well-dressed. Russian women are always well-dressed, doesn't matter if they go to buy bread or if they go to whatever. They were all well-dressed and thing, and they were just... When I cover these things, it's always you can see the last action the human being took, you know. So they were probably just uh, oh. doing midday business in town, probably just out of the bank or something like this. And they were just lying there dead, you know, with their handbags and everything like this. And uh, then I went to the school and uh, lucky enough, it's uh, it's holidays, it's school holidays. So there were only some teachers in the school that were doing some things because there's actually summer classes in the school, but at that moment there weren't any summer classes. So there were just some teachers around. Uh, so the school had only injuries and no and no dead uh, people. And so let, that was let, lucky let's enough. Have, yeah, absolutely. Let's have a look at that footage that you took yesterday now. This was, uh, you posted this on your Telegram channel, I believe, Phil. Please feel free to tell our viewers where they can find more of this. Well, yeah, they can find me on okay, Telegram. This uh, is the blood of uh, teachers of children that we, we Westerners, spill in the nest every single day. This is our money, these are our weapons that are causing this story. This is the blood of a human being. We pay for it and we send the weapons to do it. We have to think about it and we have to stop our governments. Our governments are lunatics. They don't even know what they're doing. They're spilling blood of children, of teachers, of old people, of young people, every single day in Danes for the last 10 years. Good everybody. Uh, Danesk has been under attack uh, in Makievka and Kievsky and uh, quite a big attack in the city. The first one in quite a while, like... Uh, uh, city center. So we're here with uh, Ivan and with uh, Sergey. You all know the team, and uh, we're on the way. Uh, we have to be very careful. 
So we're on the way to site now. Uh, we already heard that there's dead and injured. Absolute pandemonium. Absolute disaster here. Well, I, I take my hat off to you, Johnny, for uh, venturing to such places. Uh, those are, as we heard you say, the uh, American-made weapons paid for by American taxpayers, delivered to the Ukrainian army, and then used to attack civilians. Uh, what am I missing from the picture? Surely there must be I mean, some yeah. sort of... Go on. Yeah, so I just uh, I just made the math today. I had a look actually on the internet, and a attack like this costs quite a few million dollars. You know, I mean, the missile itself only co I think it's only like one hundred fifty or two hundred thousand each missile. But the whole attack, you know, like because you need a launcher and you need everything, co costs quite a few million dollars. And for what? I mean, it's like uh, you know I mentioned in the video that it's the first attack in uh, in about two weeks, but. The suburbs are attacked every day. It's the first attack on the center in two weeks. Uh, today, just to mention, a 90-year-old woman was injured. 90-year-old. Because in, in, when they, in Russia, in the telegram groups, when they, they, uh, they give the casualties, they say what year they were born in. She was born in 1934. So she's witnessed when she was 10 years old, the fascists were in Donetsk because Donetsk fought against the fascists. And actually for two years, it was conquered. Uh, and Donetsk had a bigger, bigger death. Uh, you know, Babi Yar was oh. very famous. It was in Kiev. But in Donetsk, yes. there were 80,000 people thrown into a mine shaft, you know, and, and there's a place here you can go and you can read all their names. So she was witness to that. And now, now like 80 years later, she has to witness this. You know, and this is why I say our governments are insane, because I don't even think they know about it. I think they sometimes, I really think they believe the Ukrainians that they're just shelling a military target, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, well, it's great that you're able to prove otherwise. It just seems that these are the wrong sort of civilians. Uh, we never hear the end of it when Ukrainian civilians, or for that matter, Israeli civilians are injured or killed, but Palestinian civilians and ethnic Russians well, it seems they don't count, and uh, nothing is a clearer indication of the moral depravity of the West than that, Johnny. No, I, I don't. I never see anything in the media about it. I mean, I've been in Donetsk almost a year with a break of one month, and uh, there hasn't been a day that there's been no casualties. There hasn't been one day with no casualties. Wow. Sometimes only injuries. But you have, you have to understand, sometimes these injuries are very serious. And the problem with Russia, it always downplays its suffering. And I've had many discussions in Moscow with the people in the Russian media and with the Russian government. I said, stop downplaying your suffering. Just say it as it is. When the civilians die, the, world's need, the world needs to know. You know, but every single day, there are people who are hurt in Donetsk. And civilians, you know, I don't cover military. It's not my job. You know, I, I can cover the military, but I don't want to cover military affairs. I'm here just to cover civilian affairs, you know, what's happening to the civilians in this place. And uh, the civilians are being hit by our weapons. It's it's very simple, you know, it's they're being hit. I mean, you saw the school. I mean, it's just a school. A HIMA doesn't miss. You know, HIMA is a very precise weapon. Maybe it can miss by five, ten meters, you know, but it doesn't right. miss. It's, it's, you know, it's not a mortar. It's not 155. It just doesn't miss. The school was targeted. And you have to remember, it's American teams that help with the targeting. Ukraines don't have the technology to do a full targeting of the HIMA. So they're hitting schools. It's like, uh, I just know, have no words for it. You know, it's like, uh, yeah, we hear all the time when an Israeli dies, like they take revenge on 10,000 uh, Palestinians, you know. Uh, yes. When a Ukrainian uh, civilian dies, all the world hears about it for about a week. But the Russian civilians, are, are they're, they're, they're dying every day. They're getting injured every day. And uh, it seems that nobody cares about it. Uh, I'm sorry to say I can only agree with you. Um, and what is the state of civil society and government, indeed, in the in the region that you're in at the moment? 
Are public services still working? People going about their business, a decent supply of food, or have things begun to break down? No, absolutely not. Everything is functioning. I mean, these regions are part of Russia now, so they have the whole backing of uh, right. of uh, Russia. The the supermarkets are full. The center of the city is a very vibrant place. You know, it's still there's still curfew after 10 p.m. You can't go out because it's still the, I mean, it's still a place of war. But uh, there's also life. There's bars. There's restaurants. There's clubs. There, there's libraries. You know, it's all it's all happening. And there's definitely no shortage of anything. You know. All right. Well, I'm I must admit I'm pleased to hear that. We'll be right back after this short break. Today's news talk radio TNT.